Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and today we're doing another in our 12 by 12 series. So what we're using today is we're going to be using um, a piece of paper or a piece of cardstock from the Stamperia House Roses collection. You've seen me use this quite a few times before, so you know it's one of my favourites. Um, now you all liked, apparently, there it is, um, you all liked the templates I created, um, so I've made one for this as well. Um, I will work my way through the template as I use it, so if you want to do a quick screenshot now is your choice. I'll do a little bit of a screenshot time at the end as well, but this is what I'm working towards. Sorry it's a bit grubby, I stuck the labels on a little bit quicker than my ink dried apparently. Um, so this is the square I'm going to be using and I'll tell you one of the reasons I'm going to be using this. Now it'll become apparent as to which of these sections are which. However when you look at this template this section here is the important template because that will become the front of the gift bag you're going to be making. So if I move this up I can see that this area here is going to be the front of my gift bag. Also, if I move it to one side and line it up, I can see this is the area I'm going to lose off the bottom. Also, another thing to consider is this area up here, this area, there's going to be a portion of this, which is this area, that's going to become the flap that goes over the top of the bag. So therefore, there's no writing on there. It doesn't matter whether there's like a butterfly or a flower or something like that because that could be seen from either direction. However, if it does have texts on it or words or things that are purely directional, then you'll have to consider how to decorate to cover it up or move on to another piece of paper. Um, the inside was just plain, which is fine for what I needed. Now we're going to be making a gift bag um, and a gift bag, I'm using it for sweets or candy, um, only because it's a lightweight bag, that's not a problem. I was inspired by someone called Helen Griffin to make this, although Helen actually did um, four really small gift bags out of a 12 by 12 where I'm doing one really large one. So therefore, my measurements are different to hers and some of my techniques might be slightly different to hers as well. I will endeavour in the description box, which is down there, or under the description it may say see more. If you click on that, I'll endeavour to put the link through to Helen Griffin's um, original video there so you can see what I saw. As I said, Helen took a piece of 12 by 12 cut it into four 6 by 6s and they made smaller versions. It's very cute for little gifts. Um, for me, this is all about turning something maybe shop bought into something that's a little more, a bit more of a thoughtful gift, should we say. So I'm going to put this at the top, just out of my eye shot, and we're going to start work and we can work and talk at the same time with this. So pretty much this is a really quick and simple make. Am I in shot? I'm finding it really hard to see at the moment. Yep, there you go. Only because my camera is up so high. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard, just a regular scoreboard. Okay, things to note. Your paper needs to be in the correct orientation for the first set of scoring. In other words, that's the top of my design, this is the bottom of the design. On the template I've written top of design, bottom of design, and that's what I mean is that it's in its correct orientation. Let's pop that over there, let's pop out the scoreboard. There you go. So my first score line needs to be at four inches, so I'm gonna come in at four inches and score down. I apologise for those working in centimetres and millimetres. I couldn't work out the different, different measurements, so therefore I just stuck with inches. The next score line is five and three quarters, which is there. Score down, score down. The next measurement is nine and three quarters, which I score down, back up. And then my last one is 11 and a half. Score down, score, let's do that again, score down, there you go. So basically my score lines are four inches, five and three quarters, nine and three quarters, and eleven and a half. And they're mirrored here on the template, four, five and three quarters, nine and three quarters, eleven and a half. Now once you've done that you need to take your piece of card stock or paper stock, turn to the right. Now here we're going to do a one and three quarter score, so that's one inch, and three quarters, and I'm going to score 
all the way down. I like to run my scoring tool back up again. And then from the top, I need to do a three inch score from the top. So as that's 12, I obviously need to come to nine because three from 12 equals nine. Or it did when I went to school anyway. So, and then I'm gonna turn it back up the way just so we can take one look at the template. The template will tell you three inches from the top, one through quarter from the bottom. There's your three inches, there's your one through quarters from the bottom. Okay, so we're, we're in, in line with everything here. So let's take the scoreboard out of the way. We'll no longer need the scoreboard. Let's pop that down where I'm not gonna knock it over. Now, um, you will notice I scored the face of my design because I've always gone with the theory that if you make a valley, as in you indent it, then you should make the valley into a mountain. And my reasoning behind that is as you're pressing down to score that line, you're compressing the fibers in the paper, which for me means it's less likely to tear or split or crack um, when you fold it in the opposite direction. Now, I must admit, I very rarely have any problems, well, I'll say very rarely, I have any problems really with Stamperia paper cracking, um, but you may not be using Stamperia or you may be using another quality of paper or cards. So there are no guarantees in life, guys. Just know that sometimes things crack, sometimes they don't. And a lot of the time it's usually user error, e.g. I've done it wrong. <laughs> or it's a case of um, the quality of the paper or the card you're using may not be of such to do what you're trying to do with that particular material. Hopefully that all made sense really. Right, so I've got all of my scoring folded, so you should now have a piece like this. I like keeping returning to the correct orientation purely because that helps me keep in mind what I'm doing. So score, score, tool not needed, scissors needed now. So if I bring back in the template, this whole chevroned area needs to be cut away. So we're cutting down there and cutting along there. I like to get that done first because that means that I actually then do fully understand where everything else lies on my design. My shot, I am in shot. I'm also, the score line is here, but I'm cutting just below the score line so that I don't have a score line at the top of the bag I'm using. Yeah, and I'm going to cut this down here as well. There you go. Now, the little bit you cut off, you can do a couple of things with, should you choose. You could actually cut this to be four inches by one and three quarter. And once we built the bag, you could put one of these pieces inside to actually strengthen the bottom of the bag. Or what I like to do is I come in, I'll just chop that end off chop that end off not the straightest cut in the world Griffiths and what I do is I just come in and I will make myself a little gift tag so that if I wanted to add a little to you or from me or something gift tag like that I could go ahead and do it so there you go oh, there's Biscuit and the Postman again I think every time I start filming Biscuit decides he needs to talk to the postman so not that we get a lot of posts it's just that Biscuit likes to talk to the postman so, or it could be my sister having a delivery. So anyway, I'm, I sometimes make a gift card out of this section. And if not, these will all go into my scrap box anyway. It's not like they get wasted. So we now have this bit. As we've seen, we've removed that. You also need to remove this little area at the bottom here. So I should get a smaller size. Scissors. Again, I'm cutting to the edge of the score line so that I'm removing the score line as well as cutting. So I'll pop that bit out. Now that's where we're up to as far as removing pieces. We now need to cut pieces and by that I mean I need to cut where the score lines are. Depending on which way you like your paper to look at it these are the lines I'm cutting. Now what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to cut very fractionally a little tiny sliver of a V. So what I'm doing in real life is actually removing the score line entirely. 
Um, as you can see, if I lay that down, can you see that? You've got a little tiny V. That will just help with everything tucking in neatly. Um, a lot of the time, I'll actually literally cut the score line out. Okay, that one out there. I'm just pinching, pinching the piece of paper off the back when you see me put my hand behind. And by that, I mean the piece of paper is actually sticking up. I just come in and I just give it a little pull and remove it. So I've done all that. Now there's another piece here. I'm going to give this just ever such a slight shave a little piece off that so that all of my edges are actually nicely folded together. So let's put that out of the way, that out of the way. So we now have the basis of, I need to cut that just a little closer. So what I'm trying to avoid is, if you can see there, I'm not sure the light will catch it. I've got a little bit of the score line there. I just want to remove that just because I'm a bit of a neat freak and I want to make sure that it's as perfect as I can get it. So there you go. So we've got we've got a piece all together. Now we've completed every single step of this. I didn't write cut to these because I thought you would have seen the video anyway. If I kept writing things on here, the template would have been really, really messy. So this half inch flap here is where this area is going to attach to itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with I'm using art glitter glue. Now you could use double sided tape down here and it would work equally as well. Although I do advise I'd probably use a red liner tape or a really strong tape because your regular paper crafting tape may not be um, strong enough. Actually, one thing I might want to do here, this isn't what I normally do, but I'm going to do this just for just for neatness sake. I'm going to take a little bit of an edge off those so as you can see. We've got a slight bevel top and bottom. That's just me having a moment as I was talking to you. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to put my art glitter glue on here. Um, I'm using art glitter glue because I know it grabs really quickly. You could easily use white PVA glue for this or any other glue that you actually saw fit. I just actually like using the art glitter glue purely because it just sticks really quickly. So as that said, I'm going to fold this over on the central line and it will line up perfectly, or it should if all our scoring is correct, right along the edge. Now, if you do have a little bit of an overlap, we might have a little bit of an overlap there, just ever so slightly. And that happens when I'm scoring the card. Sometimes the card moves slightly and I've had that before. So what I would suggest is at this point, come in and just take that little edge off. It's not really going to show, but I'm going to know it's there. So I'm going to come in and just take that little bit of an edge off. Make sure you don't cut through the fold of your card because that would be really embarrassing, wouldn't it? There you go, it's taken that off. So I've just evened that down a bit. As you can see, it's going to be back at the back of my, box, um, my bag anyway, but it's a good habit just to make sure that's nice and trimmed down the side. Now, Next thing we're going to do is get that off my fingers is we're going to fold in the bottom of the box. Now I fold in the sides. I'm going to fold in the back and then fold back the front. And by that, I mean, this is the bit that's going to fold over the top of my box. This is the front face of my box. It's this one that I want to be the last fold. So I've got a nice neat edge because if I don't do that, you'll have this line along there. And that's something I learned from Helen's um, video, which I hadn't actually thought about, but I have now. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to put some art glitter glue on the flaps here. Not going too overboard with the amount I'm putting in, because there are going to be several layers of card here. So and what I'm going to do is remember that's the front. So this piece needs to fold over first and attach down. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to give this one coat as well. About glitter glue. And fold it over the top. Now, I like to stand that up and then get a ruler or something that will fit down in there and actually just press this down with the edge of a ruler. And I'm doing that because there's no way in heck I'm going to get my hand down inside there. I've got big hands. It's never going to happen, folks. So 
put that, tap that down all the way around just to make sure it's fully in contact. Now I was saying you could have taken an extra piece of this card, cut it to size and drop it down in there. I haven't had a problem with these not being strong enough for candy and chocolate. If you're thinking of something heavier, maybe you might want to reinforce the inside of that. So all of the gluing is now done. Let's just put the pin in the glue. There you go, pin in the glue. Now, the next thing I like to do is I like to round these corners. Where's my rounded corner punch? There it is. Nothing like forgetting a piece of equipment, is there? So I'm just gonna come in and round those corners. Now, if you are someone who has one of those really fancy edge punches, this is a perfect place to use it. I don't have one. I know that, I think Martha Stewart has them. I, I know several other designers have them. I don't have them, but this is a perfect place to actually do that. So we're almost at the end now. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have my fingers here hold front and back and I'm going to pinch this together just enough so I can close over the top and then I'm going to take a little bit of a clip and put a little clip on it and that's purely because the next stage I need to do I need to do um, with this held in place so okay so that action again was I'm squeezing but I'm pushing these fingers in to actually give me that little indentation now the next bit is I'm going to use a punch a single punch. You could use part of um, a regular hole punch. Um, you could even make this a slotted hole if you wish. Excuse the noise. There you go. And I put a hole through it and then I let that go because now I know all those three holes are lined up. Now what I would normally put in these is I've got a box somewhere. Um, I've got a mixture of sweets and candies here. Now remember at Christmas time in Britain, they normally sell those big tins of chocolates for Christmas, and they're usually on bargain sale, and especially after Christmas, they're really on bargain sale. If you buy one or two of those tins and store them away, and you can resist eating them, then this is a perfect way to make little thank you gifts, or thank you teacher, or just a little token gift to someone occasionally to say, I'm thinking of you. If not, go, go to your inexpensive stores and buy a couple of bags of candy. I mean, I find that you can pick them up quite easily for like a dollar or a pound one thing to note though make sure they're all wrapped in their own individual wrappers and also when you're taking them out of bags remember you're taking away anything the manufacturer wants the person who's going to eat it to be aware of so if you're giving these to someone who has a nut allergy or some sort of allergy, it's up to you to look at what the wrapping says to make sure that they're safe to do so. Okay, so just a word of caveat about you. So I'm just gonna take some of these and I'm just gonna pop them. I would if I could get them in. Just gonna pop them in there. Maybe two more in there. There you go, just enough now. As you can see, I could probably get three boxes out of here, three of these out of here easily. And that would have been what, about 30 to 40 cents or 30, 30 to 40 pence um, to do this bag. And I'm using up spare 12 by 12 anyway. So chocolates are in there. I'm gonna fold that back over again. I'm gonna pick up my little clip for the next bit just cause it's easy. Now at this point, you could decorate the front. You could decorate the sides. You can do whatever you want. You could distress it, whatever. Um, I'm just showing you the basics for this. I'm then gonna get myself a piece of ribbon, whichever ribbon you want to use. Let's give myself a generous piece of this. Now I'm using something that's got an organza to it, that's got a softness that'll go through this hole and not cause me any problems. Just remember, um, if you're using an a stiffer ribbon it may not go through this hole but you can actually get thinner hole uh, thinner ribbons anyway so I'm just tidy that up a bit so I just pulled it through the hole then I'm going to wrap it down and try and get the ends relatively even so basically I'm creating the closure for this this parcel so all I've done is I've just pushed it from the back through there wrap this around the front and I'm going to tie this in a double knot. Now I'm going to tie it in a double knot for a very simple reason. Number one, it means that if it comes, if the bow comes undone in transit or in the gift giving, then everything isn't going to fall out. So I'm just see if I can tie a double knot there. There you go. So I've tied a double knot now so my thing is secure. I can take that out of the way and then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to creep myself a bow. 
There you go. I'm going to go over the top to create the next loop. If I get my fingers through, I'm not the world's best at tying bows, guys. So don't expect, don't expect Martha Stewart bow tying here. It's never going to happen. So just where's the other bit? So I'm going to tidy this up so I've got nice, nice ish bow. You can go to town here. This would be a perfect place to hang a charm or something as well. I then like to pull it from the back so that the knot of the bow actually sits within the hole there. I just find that makes it look so much prettier. I'm going to come in and give it a couple of little swallow tail ends just by folding the ribbon into half and giving it a bit of a snip. So there you go guys, we've done it. So that's that's how I turn the 12 by 12 um, piece of card or paper stock into a nice little gift bag. That's a perfect little thank you. If I did want to, where's that tag gone? If I wanted to add a little tag, I put a little tag on there. If I wanted to put a charm, I could hang a little charm there. This would look lovely if you've got one of those decorative edge punches. Or if you've got a nice die, before you assembled all of this, you could put this through your die cutting machine and cut a nice frilly edge. But I think that's a really nice, simple little idea. Great for a gift. I did think when I was constructing this, um, video as well we're heading towards halloween trick-or-treat time stuff like that i do know several families now that are really nervous of trick-or-treating because they don't want their kids burying their hands into like a bowl of candy or a bowl of chocolates or something and then all the kids are handling the same chocolates which is where um i would say pop over into the description box click on helen griffin's um make and she does ones that are obviously a quarter the size of this because she does four from 112 by 12 and those would be great to put little halloween candies in i'm sure you could get cardstock or a paper pad in halloween designs and make little tiny parcels or little tiny packages and you can hand those out and that way you know that nothing inside there is contaminated because i know we're all a little bit more aware nowadays of the whole virus thing that's going on around which sadly has changed the way we do things so hopefully you enjoyed that so let's quickly pull this back in the template am i completely in shot okay so take a screenshot of that hopefully it's been a really easy build i found this one a really easy build and it's quite a quick one and it is a way of using up 12 by 12s maybe the 12 by 12s you don't like but you know what not everyone likes to like what you like and you're making them into little gift bags to give away so maybe the recipient will love it and you don't and where's my little sign gone? There you go. So I think that's all for me from this month, guys. So all that's left to do is say goodbye. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye now.